Welcome to the step one review study guide, and in this lesson, we learn about the purine salvage pathway and efficiencies. We talked about purine-based synthesis in another video, and what we learned is that PRPP from the Fibos 5 phosphate can become IMP and then AMP or GMP, which can give rise to bases guanine and adenine, the purines. However, in this video, we will learn about the salvage pathway, which can actually start from the bottom up, that is, free bases turning into nucleotides. Let's start with the free base guanine. Guanine can be converted into its nucleotide form GMP by the enzyme hypoxanthine guanine phosphoribosyl transferase, or HGPRT for short, with the addition of PRPP. PRPP is used as a source for ribose sugar backbone and phosphate groups. Hypoxanthine can be converted to its nucleotide IMP by the same enzyme, also with the addition of PRPP. However, if the body decides that the free bases get removed, the mechanism for this is that both guanine and hypoxanthine can be converted into xanthine. When hypoxanthine gets converted into xanthine, the enzyme that does this is xanthine oxidase or XO. XO can react with xanthine further by turning it into uric acid, then allantoin by urate oxidase, where it can be excreted from the body. If for some reason that the enzyme HGPRT that turns guanine into hypoxanthine into their nucleotide form is absent, then the only choice they have is to be disposed of by the following excretory pathway of these purines. Conversion to xanthine, then uric acid, and then finally allantoin. There is actually a name for this deficiency, and it's called Lishnayan syndrome. The conversion of these free bases to uric acid will cause a buildup of uric acid, which can manifest themselves in symptoms such as intellectual disability, self-mutilization, aggression, hyperuricemia, in babies, orange sand in diapers, which is actually sodium urate crystals, gout, dystonia, and macrocytosis. Remember, HGPRT, H for hyperuricemia, G for gout, P for pissed off, aggression and self-mutilization, R for retardation, intellectual disability, and T for dystonia. It is the uric acid that causes the negative symptoms. If we inhibit the enzymes xanthine oxidase by the drugs allopurinol or febuzostat, then xanthine will not be converted into uric acid and not cause the negative symptoms. Allopurinol specifically inhibits hypoxanthine conversion to xanthine, and febuzostat inhibits xanthine's conversion to uric acid. Now, let's take a look at adenine. The free base can be converted into its nucleotide form by the enzyme known as adenine phosphoribosyl transferase or APRT for short, with the addition of PRPP, just like the earlier salvages, to become AMP. However, if we want to rid the body of adenine, then AMP must first be converted into its nucleoside form, adenosine, and then afterwards, inosine by the enzyme adenosine deaminase, or ADA for short. Once it becomes inosine, it can then follow the same pathway that IMP followed to be rid of by the body, converted to hypoxanthine, xanthine by XO, uric acid, and then finally allantoin. What happens if ADA is deficient? The only way that adenosine can be rid of by the body is through the pathway which utilizes ADA. If ADA is absent, then adenosine will be converted into deoxyATP, and the levels of deoxyATP will be high. Ribonucleotide reductase is an enzyme that controls DNA synthesis, and high levels of deoxyATP will inhibit this enzyme. With ribonucleotide reductase inhibited, highly differentiated and rapidly dividing cells such as lymphocytes that need DNA will not be synthesized, thus leaving the body immunodeficient. This is one of the major causes of autosomal recessive severe combined immunodeficiency. That's all for this lesson of Step 1 Review. We'll see you in the next video.